Coming up on Hands on iOS, I am going to show you the powerful folder and file management system that lives on your iOS device. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Taylor Store. Get 20% off plus free shipping with every purchase through October 31st at taylorstore.com slash twit and use code twit. One of my favorite apps on iOS happens to be one that I feel like I don't use enough because I, it just doesn't come up as often. However, it is one of the most powerful apps that exists on your iOS device, and it is included by default. This app is called Files. Files is the photo, file, and folder management system for iOS. It used to be that it was quite difficult to access and, and fool around with files on your iOS devices, and it became a complicated process of having to sync your iPhone with iTunes or uh, plug it into your Mac and try to pull the files off there, or in some cases use third-party apps in order to access the different files on your Mac. Well, Apple has since updated iOS multiple times, and included with that update came the Files app. The Files app is your place to access the folders and files that you have on your iOS device and stored in iCloud Drive. But it gets even more powerful than that, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. First, you will probably, if you launch this app, you will come into the Recents tab. The Recents tab shows you the files that you have recently played around with. These are the files that uh, you have most recently used or saved or adjusted or one of those things. And this is the place that you can kind of search and see the content that you want to get access to. So you can see there is an audio file right here in the Recents tab. I'm going to tap on that. And it brings up a way to simply play that file. If I tap in the bottom left-hand corner, I can share that file. I can add people, meaning that it lets others actually access that file from iCloud Drive. I can add tags to it, and we'll talk about tags in just a second. Or I can email it, airdrop it, message it. Basically, you can share it in any way that you want to. I'm going to hit the close button, and I'm going to tap done in the top left corner here. And we're going to actually tap and hold on that file. When we tap and hold on that file, you can see that there are immediate steps to copy the file, to duplicate it, to move it to a different folder, to delete it, and here's where things get interesting. We've got a place to rename the file if we want to. We can tag it as we want. We can quick look the file, meaning that it pulls up a visual of the uh, the folder or the file, and you can get information about it. Or one of my favorite places to go is that info button. When I tap that info button, it gives me all of the information that I need about this file. It shows that it's a waveform audio format. It is 122.4 megabytes. The kind of file that it is, the size, the date it was created, the date it was modified, the date it was last opened, where it's stored, how long it is. And if I tap show more, then in some cases, the file will actually give you more information, particularly with videos, PDFs, and things like that. There are also options for tags. So let me tap done in the top right corner, and let's talk about tags. If we tap on the browse button in the bottom right hand corner, you can see these different tags. Now you may have some tags that uh, you want to create, or you may want to stick with Apple's basic tags and sort of create a system for yourself. So you can decide that a red tag means that the file is urgent, or it could mean that the file is not important anymore and you want to simply remove it. The orange tag can mean a file is coming due, it's something that you want to adjust. Basically, you can create your own system. Like Michael Scott, who says that uh, when something is tagged green, green means go, so he knows to go ahead and shut up about it. Perhaps that's your filing system. It is 
adjustable however you would like. In fact, I can adjust the names of these files to see, or rather tags to whatever it happens to be. And down here at the bottom, you can see that there's work, home, and important. And currently those tags don't have colors assigned to them. So how do we adjust tags? Well, Adjusting tags is a simple step, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But I do want to talk about the other things that are available in this Browse tab before we get there. It starts out with locations. There are files stored in your iCloud drive. Uh, in this case, this iPhone is part of a family plan, and so it is connected to a two terabyte iCloud drive storage plan. There's on my iPhone, these are files that are created in different apps and others on your own iPhone, and then files that have been recently deleted. So if you accidentally delete a file, no biggie, you can tap on recently deleted and get it back. Then there are favorites that you can add. So maybe uh, the downloads folder in your iCloud drive is a favorite place for you to go. And again, these tags down here at the bottom. I'm going to tap on the button in the top right corner because this is where you can make adjustments. Now, you can see that there's a scan documents button, a connect to server button, and an edit button. The scan documents folder, or rather option, lets you simply and easily take photos of pieces of paper, receipts, whatever it happens to be, and quickly scan them into your iCloud drive and save them there. So instead of having to set up a scanner or take photos in the photos app and make adjustments there, this is primed and ready to create documents and save them very easily. The connect to server option is fantastic. It lets you if you have a local network attached storage, or if you've got a server that exists out there on the web somewhere that you have access to, tapping connect to server lets you do just that. You type in the address for the server and tap connect, and it will give you the necessary components that you need to actually log into it, depending on how you are connecting to the server. I'm going to tap cancel, and we're going to tap on that button in the top right corner again and choose edit. This is the button that is very important in the files app. When I tap on edit, now you can start to see the different options that are available. You can remove uh, favorites that you don't want to have there. You can remove colors that you don't want to have there. And the most important step, which is that you can change the name. So if red is not what you want for the red tag, you can call that urgent or whatever it happens to be that you would like to set up. I can also tap on the circle on the left uh, to remove a color if I don't want it there and make adjustments that way. I'm going to tap done as there are no adjustments that I want to make to that. But then on the right side, anytime you see these three little lines in an item, uh, a list of items, that means you can hold down and drag those colors around. So maybe there are colors that are more important to you that you want to adjust that way. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Taylor Store. Taylor Store lets you customize high quality made to order clothing. Their Size Me app revolutionizes the measurement process. They let you customize dress shirts, chinos, suits, polo shirts, and shorts. You can pick your fabric, the thread, the color, the buttons, embroidery, and more. If something doesn't fit, donate it to charity and Taylor Store will send you a new item. Their customer service team is impeccable. Get 20% off plus free shipping with every purchase through October 31st at taylorstore.com slash twit and use code twit. That's taylorstore.com slash twit, code twit. Terms and conditions apply. Now, I'm going to tap done because I want to show you something. The difference between what locations currently shows and what it can show. Depending on the apps that you have on your phone and depending on whether or not those developers have set up an integration with Apple's Files app, you may have access to other storage locations that you would not normally have access to from this one place. That makes the Files app the place to manage all of your files, makes it super handy. So I'm going to tap that button in the top right again. I'm going to choose edit. And you can see that I've got toggles here for both Google Drive and Dropbox. I recently downloaded them to this phone. That way you could see that once the app is downloaded, those become available. And I can tap to toggle them on like so, 
tap done, and now they are selectable locations. You can add locations from within those options to your favorites. You can tag them as you need to. All of that information becomes available in this one app and is searchable, which is very handy. So what happens whenever I tap on one of these? Well, the this iPhone, which is a test iPhone with a test account, does not have uh, a Google Drive account or a Dropbox account. So I just want to show you what it's like without having that information available. So yes, it becomes immediately available in this app, even if you have yet to log in. So I'll tap on Google Drive, and you can see that it says authentication is required. It gives you a nice handy link to open Google Drive where you can sign in, and then it will become available in the Files app. I can do the same with Dropbox. And look, this is so integrated that you can actually do it from right within the app. So I would choose Authenticate and I would sign into the Dropbox app and that would make it available as well. There are loads of apps in the App Store that have offered this integration with the Files app. So once you find them, they will show up here in the locations area simply by tapping on the more button in the top right corner, choosing edit, and looking at the locations section. This lets you then see all of those locations. There's one more thing that I want to talk about outside of this. So we've learned that you can connect to a server, you can add locations and actually search and access them from within the files app, even if it's a third party app, as long as that developer has taken advantage of the integration. But it doesn't just stop at these software methods. In fact, there are hardware methods as well. So I have a dongle from Apple that is was originally intended. You can see that it has a camera icon here. This was originally intended to give you access to and upload photos from your camera direct to your iPhone. But now it is a more powerful device that lets you connect USB uh, hardware to your iPhone and access that depending on what it is. This is uh, the thing that allows it to have power. So you can see that the iPhone is currently charging. That's because I've got a normal uh, lightning connector plugged in here, which is then connected to power. And then the USB is where you can connect an item. So I'm going to take this fantastic CalDigit Tough Nano USB-C uh, SSD, solid state drive. It's a hard drive made by CalDigit. Look how tiny it is. It's so cute. It comes with this uh, nice silicone case. Throw that to the side just so you can see uh, the very tiny Tough Nano by CalDigit. And it has the USB-C port on the side. So because it has a USB-C port, I am going to need to have a cable that does USB-A, which is what we have here, this dongle, to USB-C. Well, it just so happens that Belkin makes a USB-A to USB-C cable. So we will plug the USB-A portion of the cable into the dongle, like so. And then we will plug the USB-C portion of the cable into the USB-C port on the Tough Nano. And now we look on the iPhone in the Browse section and check that out. Tough Nano shows up as a USB option. All of the folders are available here. I can access them. I can select several of those options by tapping that select button in the top right corner or choose to select all by choosing select all in the top left corner and then make adjustments. I can share those folders as I want to. I can make copies of those folders. I can move them to different folders. I can delete them or if I tap the more button, I can compress them if I'd like. Then I'm gonna tap done because I don't wanna do anything to those files. I could jump into each of those files if I want to, hold down and actually get all the information about them. Uh, if we go into library, this is the reason uh, why this looks like this is because this is actually the uh, system image for the beta version of macOS. Uh, it has macOS's next edition, Big Sur, on this hard drive, and I use this to launch the uh, new version of macOS on my Mac, 
and uh, do that without having to make any adjustments to the internal storage on my Mac. So that's why these files are here. But you can see that I can very easily hop into any of these and see what is inside of these different files and folders. Uh, simply unplugging the USB-C or USB-A port will cause that to disappear as an option. And if I wanted to, I could plug in a uh, flash drive or a camera or any other device that has that, that storage on it and be able to access it using the Files app from iOS. So folks, that is your primer on the Files app from iOS and its ability to not only store and access your files, but give you an easy way to make adjustments, to organize, and to get more information about those files. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another episode of Hands on iOS. I do appreciate it. If you have questions yourself, you can send those to hands on iOS at twit.tv. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. You can head to twit.tv slash hands on iOS or twit.tv slash HOI, and that will give you access to links to the show in its various formats, both audio and video. Also over on YouTube, youtube.com slash hands on iOS. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment if you'd like. And of course, don't forget to hit that bell if you want to be notified anytime the show is available. Thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you next time on Hands on iOS. I'm Jason Howell, host of Tech News Weekly here on Twit.tv, along with my co-host, Micah Sargent. Each and every week, we talk to people who are making and breaking the tech news. It could be journalists writing amazing tech stories. It could be experts. It could be the sources of the stories themselves, developers, you name it. We bring them onto the show, and we talk to them about why their story is resonating with the world. You can watch and subscribe by going to twit.tv slash TNW. Make sure you do that and you won't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.